Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Stallions Run Pre-Playoff Edition because we are literally looking at a playoff game in Protective Stadium this Sunday as I'm recording it. I think everyone's very excited. We have uh, Pack Protective going on. Players have been going out on marketing tours and such uh, around Birmingham preparing uh, for people to come to this game. And I know I'm excited. Uh, I'm going to be there in person. You know, again, first in-person playoff game for me when it comes to the USFL. So very excited when it comes to that front. And uh, I guess let's talk about how we got here. So, of course, the Stallions went through, uh, you know, again, that up and down season a little bit. Uh, but they got that win week nine against Houston to, you know, get into the playoffs. They were able to, you know, say, okay, we're, we're in the playoffs. We just don't have the home seed yet. Uh, with the New Orleans win the next day in week nine, uh, the Stallions knew, okay, we are playing in Birmingham. Are we going to get that home seed? And to get that home seed, they just need to win against Memphis. And they got a, a close Tight win against Memphis, uh, the only Southern, uh, excuse me, South Division sweep uh, for the Stallions, uh, the two get wins against Memphis. Uh, so let's go ahead and start off with that. So you had a Derek Dillon, uh, Derek Dillon return uh, for the first touchdown of the game. Uh, that was the first offensive points. Yes, I'm going to say offensive points. I know some people say that that shouldn't count as a special teams points. I, th I think it should count as offensive points. But that was the first offensive points for the Memphis Showboats in the modern USFL. That was their second game playing the Stallions, by the way. Uh, just, just I'm just reminding that my tweet uh, seemed to uh, rattle some cages a little bit uh, when I mentioned that fact. Uh, so I thought it was uh, time to bring that up again. But uh, otherwise, uh, this was an extremely tight game. Memphis uh, taking that momentum with the return touchdown, uh, then scored another one, made it 14-0. Stallions started kicking some field goals, uh, and then Magoo working the, the Mick magic uh, towards the end of the second half. Stallions had one drive left. They 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 had they knew, okay, we're getting the ball back, but we need to go out there and score something uh, to be able and you know move this along. So they go out there, 6-14 um, showboats. Stallions go out. They get they again, Jay Sternberger absolutely goes out there. Uh, the man make sure that the team is able uh, to get those kind of important drives when it comes to pass and boom into the end zone. Uh, it is now 13, 14 uh, showboats, one point difference, one point when it comes to, uh, you know, the, the halftime again, game kicks off when it comes to the, you know, entering the second half of the game Steins, uh They don't exactly lay it on, uh, when it comes to the showboats, they have a couple drives that teeter out uh, towards the end. Uh, but the, again, two touchdowns to go out and uh, wrap up the game uh, when it comes to everything that happened. Uh, otherwise, I, I guess my final thoughts, this this really in, in, in terms of wasn't that important of a game. The Stallions went out there. They got the win. They were already in the playoffs, so they didn't have to play the, the starters as much as they had, which I know for some people that was kind of a point of conversation like, okay, where are we going to see this from now on? In the end, it just ended up being, a, we're just going to play everybody uh, who wants to start. But the Stallions, you know, again, the Showboats did get one touchdown in the second half. But otherwise, the Stallions defense was basically keeping them kind of blocked off from the red zone majority of the time when it comes to the second. And the Stallions go out there. They secure that home seed. Memphis is knocked out of the playoffs. And now... It was basically, okay, Sunday, who's it going to be? It, it's basically a play-in game. It's either going to be Houston or it's going to be New Orleans. I, and, I, and the team I kind of wanted to face more, we got New Orleans. I would rather play New Orleans compared to Houston. Houston Houston's a team that is tricky at times. And even with this, with this New Orleans game, even though it wasn't the greatest, especially with time management, if they get hot, that Houston team getting it really hot. And I would rather play a team that we have, it, it took, again, first time around, wasn't that great. But I feel like we ha this is a Stallions team that I think has New Orleans kind of figured out. And it feels like a lot of other teams kind of figure out New Orleans towards the end. I'm not saying that New Orleans cannot beat Birmingham because it's the Stallions. 
Uh, there's little, there's a reason why there's the meme that says, great, the Stallions are on. Majority of the time, I want to kill myself. And then it's like, oh, yeah, the Stallions won. You know, this is a this is a team that loves comebacks when it comes to the Birmingham Stallions. So, you know, I, it, you're kind of left in a, in a, in a questionable position of what's it going to be? It's it, I'm not going to say it's a coin flip whether Birmingham is going to win because with New Orleans, again, I think you now have more film compared to last go around, and you're also able to say, okay, this is going to be playoffs, di- different atmosphere. Let's consider this a clean slate. It's going to be tricky. Um, MAT is 100% playing a little banged up. He has not been playing as he was, especially, uh, let's say, week one through about week five. Uh, he's definitely playing like th- there's definitely some stuff that's getting to him. Uh, West Hill also production's not been super great. Sage, I know he's been, uh, you know, it, it feels like this is a New Orleans squad that their their producers are producing, but it's not at the same and exactly high rate that everyone was kind of seeing when that Breakers team was hot. So I think the, the main question is now, you know, how's everyone going to do in the playoffs? Especially with right now, Scooby Wright, it looks like he is, even though he, it was like, oh, he's going to be playing week 10. And then he ended up not playing against the, with the showboats. Is he going to be back this week? Uh, is Was there a, a problem that kind of popped up? It was like, okay, let's rest him. And what's going to happen now? Or what are we going to see with linebackers? I mean, there, there's a reason Skip Holt said in a press conference this season, you know, every week we have to leave off a, a great linebacker because the team is, this Italian's team is stacked with good linebackers. And so with Scooby now in the mix, who are you playing? So that, that, again, there's like, there's, there's a hundred different questions uh, that we have when it comes to the playoffs. Right now, the way I'm looking at things is one, like I said before, Treat the playoffs like it's a new season. Even though it's just a, a theoretically only two games, it is two games only. Treat this like it's it's a random two-game season. Treat this like you have to treat every regular season game. one home mentality has been perfect for the Stallions since last season. Treat this like a one o mentality, even for fans. I'm, I'm gonna, I'll probably be on Twitter saying, oh, you know, we, we have a good record against New Orleans, but the, the players should not be doing that. They should be treating this like a fresh start. Again, I'm going to keep repeating that because I feel like that is important. Otherwise, one thing that the Stallions need to do, they need to watch that film. They need to figure out how to keep Sage. They need to keep figure out Dixon. They need to keep how to keep Hill kind of uh, locked up. And then when it comes to the offense, Stay away from Vontae Diggs. Uh, if you are trying to throw it to someone and you see Diggs is covering them, throw it to someone else. The, the man will pick off that ball like it is nothing. I am scared whenever the, a ball is thrown in his general direction. Stay away from Vontae Diggs. So that that's kind of my main two things. One, figure out how to stop the major offensive production for New Orleans. Find it, you know, Look at look at the past two ga- games when it came to the, comes to the breakers. What kind of was the the factors in losing and winning against them? What's the factors when it comes to you know okay we need to stay away from digs. What's kind of the best routes we can use? So that's kind of my main two things. As of kind of a winning, who I think is going to win? I think this is going to be a tight one. I think it's going to be similar to a uh, week uh, seven. Or was it six? Week six. Uh, against New Orleans, I think it's going to be a tight, close win. Uh, but I'm going to have to go with a uh, Breakers, excuse me, I nearly said that. Birmingham win. With a Stallions win uh, over the Breakers, I'm going to say it's a score like 27 23. And then who knows what's going to happen with Pittsburgh, uh, Michigan. That's going to be a, a game all in itself. I'll leave that to. Uh, Cal and Webb to discuss that. But here we are. If this is the the final, you know, non-game review uh, of, well, I shouldn't say non-game, but uh, the final uh, pre-game Stallions run for the 2023 season, it's been an honor being able to talk to you guys, kind of discuss the Stallions as we're heading into the playoffs. 
it's it's getting real. If we lose this game, we get eliminated. So I want to say thank you for listening. If you've been listening throughout this 2023 season, I'll see you next time. Probably will be a either a championship preview or a season review uh, as we reach the end. But once again, thank you, and we'll see you next time. I've been Buck. I'll see you around.